Welcome back, everybody. This is Music Talk. I'm Dave. I'm Mike. Welcome to the show. <laughs> this week we have we're doing an album that was requested by a viewer named Palma or Palma, I believe. Mm -hmm. So Palma asked us to review this. Uh, checked out our video on the Pretty Reckless and left a comment. So this week we're going to do the review for Evanescence. Looks like this, the bitter truth. It's just like a pill that you swallow, the bitter truth. No, that's not an earring in her tongue. That's yeah, a pill. that's a pill. <laughs> then on the gate, you got the band there and her in a little broken mirror type thing there, which is symbolic Shatter. for some of the words in there, you know. Shatter. Back is, Amy, I'm sorry, but we're old and we can't read this stuff when you put it like this you got to make it a little brighter in the writing and darker in the back but i mean you know the album you could probably read it much better no, well kidding. you know how you get that kind of kind of picture now you shine a shine a red light through a dirty aquarium and is that what that is <laughs> that could be could be um, no, all right no <laughs> So the CD, which I wish they would have done uh, something different to the actual CD. Here's a CD. I think they should have made the whole CD look like the pill. It would have been cool if the whole CD was the pill, you know? Anyway, then you got the booklet inside, The Bitter Truth, black with red, which you can read that. That's cool. I like that. And you got all the words in here. She did lighten up the words in here for white because she's like, well, if Dave and Mike are going to be reviewing the record, we want them to be able to read it. Right? Be able to read. We know they're old farts. Right. These two old dudes that should be just doing uh, reviews on uh, bluegrass are going to do my CD. So That's right. On bluegrass. <laughs> <laughs> so she's got some pictures in here of the band. They're all in here. It's pretty cool. A couple pictures of Amy. And then on the back, which is very difficult to read, is a lot of the credits and stuff, which, you know, is pretty cool. It's got, you know, this was done in a couple, a little bit was done in Nashville again, Blackbird yep. Studio, you know. You probably got a little more details on that. I didn't really do a lot of research on it. Well, yeah, it was Nashville. Um, let me see here. Hold on. The uh, <clears throat> production mix, mixing and recording was Nick Ras Kolinskin. Collins next. <laughs> yeah, I know it's a difficult name, and he actually helped write a couple songs as well. Yeah, he did. Yeah. Nathan Yarborough was one of the engineers. Logan Greeson was assistant engineering. Yeah. Nick Spezia was strings engineering. Ted Jensen mastering. Tiago Nunez was programming tracks two through eleven. Yeah. Will be Hunt additional programming. Now I've heard that name before. Well, Will Hunt's a drummer, so I'm wondering, are they related? Um, I don't know. Um, I was trying to figure out because I mean, we got Will Hunt on drums, but you got Will B Hunt that helped do some writing. So I wonder if they're related. I wonder, I wonder if it's yeah. Well, I wonder if it's Will. You know? <laughs> could, be, could, be, could be just his professional writing name is Will B or something. Right. Uh, but it's got it recorded at what Falcon Studios and also Blackbird. And well, Ocean it, Way. Yeah. Yeah. So. So yeah. yeah. And your band, you know, you you got Amy Lee on vocals and keys, and Troy McClawhorn on guitar, Jim Majura on guitar, Tim McCord on bass, and then of course Will Hunt on drums. Right, right. So you got additional musicians too, though. Yeah, yeah there's a yeah, there's some in there. There's a bunch on here, really. Yeah. Uh -huh. now you got Nashville music scoring on the orchestra. Yeah. <clears throat> Yeah, the string Doc section Kirkland on you know programming yeah. but you got deanna jacob jacob on uh, backing vocals on track eight Lizzie. yeah we'll talk about that when we get to eight don't be spoiling all that wait till we get to track eight. <laughs> all right, all right, all right, all right. come on now <laughs> track eight there shit <laughs> so everybody's gonna be rushing to go listen to track yeah, eight. Like, oh hell we gotta get to track eight which is one of my favorite songs on the record by the way but i'm not gonna say that until we get there so, you know, run through the songs real quick. We got, you know, Artifact and The Turn. It's uh, basically two and a half minutes of an opener. You know, you're kind of uh, mellow, kind of like a prequel to the storm that you're getting ready to come into, right? Storm hits, it works your subwoofer out. <laughs> Man, when you hit, when you hit second, that second song, Broken Pieces Shine, are you talking about coming in hard? I mean, woo. And yep. man, they come in rocking and I'm talking about heavy, heavy. You got that double bass. You got 
uh, everything turned down to like a, a B flat. And I mean, it's just vibrating your world. Yep. I think probably it hits the Richter scale. If yeah. You, you know, well, I, I'm, running, I'm running my, I'm running my system here. The, the power amps are at 50%. Mm -hmm. And then I've got <clears throat> my nano patch L pad here, which drops everything down coming out of the mixer. So I can run my mixer at full blast. So, and I run that at the most at 50%. Mm -hmm. So I'm only using 25% of the power of the system. And I'm telling you right now, there wasn't a place you could go in my apartment that you couldn't feel the bass just rattling the floor. Dude, I'm telling you, man, that first song, when it comes in, and if you're not expecting it, you better be. When you put this record on and you get to the end of the first song and then it preludes into the second, you got like a, about a, a 10 seconds maybe. Mm -hmm. And then, <clears throat> and then it's like your world's rolling, man. I mean, it's, it's crazy hard. It's, it's heavy. I loved it. It's, it's a great song comes at you it hits you right in the heart because it's it's just pounding right here man yep. and uh there's a part in there after the second verse where she does that shine and she's like shine. and uh, man that was such a beautiful vocal line when she did that i've it always was, i've always liked i've always liked amy lee singing and what yeah, i like about it she's not screaming at you she's singing she's and, singing yeah well, and this, I've read reviews where people say, oh, she's off key and stuff. No, no. Dude, there is nowhere that I've ever heard Amy Lee off key. Even no, on a bad night when she's sick, she's yeah. killing anything out there. This album really pretty much just, you know, is a reminder that she is the high priestess of, of singing rock and roll, honestly, yeah. especially hard rock. I mean, she's top notch, man. I mean, you don't get much better and female vocals than what you got on this record right here. Uh, I mean, <clears throat> what you, uh, what's going to get you close to it's Ann Wilson. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, yep. and if you listen to Ann Wilson sing, it's the same thing. And, and gets a little bit more gritty, mm -hmm. but, but Ann doesn't get as hard and heavy. I mean, this, this is just gets real dark. This, yeah, this is dark and heavy. Yeah. It's dark and heavy. No doubt. So, yeah. So then yeah. we get to song number three. I know we've already talked like five minutes and we ain't even got to song three yet, right? Mm -hmm. Song three, the game is over. Love that vocal, the way she does that. Had enough. You know, I love that. Had enough. It's, that was just awesome, dude. And then uh, when she gets into that uh, uh, that part where she says, uh, where is it at? Um, I believe. She said, uh, change me into something I believe. So I don't have to pretend, right? So she's hitting that. So when she hits that, so I don't have to pretend and she nails it really up in that high register and then drops way back low to hit that second verse. It's like, that's dynamics that you can't teach. Right. You know what I mean? Right. It's like. That's a passion. It's in the heart. It is. It's, and it's also a talent, but it's more of the passion of the music. And, you know, they, they, we're absent for a while. This band's been around for a while, and this is oh, yeah. only the fifth studio album. Yeah. And reason being <clears throat> is um, they took a hiatus, and Amy Lee <clears throat> sued the record label for back uh, royalties mm. and won the lawsuit, but only got one point five million. But it took all that time, and by in doing that which is probably what the ultimate goal was, was to get released from the contract. Right. Right. And, you know, more power to her. I mean, yeah. to me, that just tells me it's not about the money with her so much as it's the music. Yeah. And cool. granted money is going to attract the talent she needs behind her. Yeah. But you know what? If I don't know, I just wish people could get dollar signs out of their eyes and go with their heart. Yeah. And, and what I was going to say, too, about this song, The Game Is Over, when she says something, when she goes into something, the way that she says it, it's like it has such a conviction about it. That's the mm -hmm. best thing about Amy Lee is there are certain times when she puts everything she has into one or two words, and it's just unreal, man. Uh, yeah. And, 
and and it and is it, it's a passion like you said and, and you can't get that you can't you know you have to have that in you you can't just learn that and i mean she's, no, you she's can't, you, you 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 can't learn it and it's also something too that will forever live in anybody's heart's got passion for it but you got to exercise it yeah exactly and you know they have been on a hiatus but when you know this album uh, i don't see where she's lost a step at all no yeah then you, then you get to song number four which is yeah right and to me it was kind of like a mix between a muse song and a nine inch nail song you know had that, <laughs> you know what i mean because yeah. you know that starts out with that it reminded me of muse right and then it goes into the nine inch nails you know uh it just had that sound to me it was pretty cool uh, now this was the only song on the album with a guitar solo. Yeah, the only song on the record with a guitar solo. Which mm -hmm. I'll get into that later after we go through all the stuff. Was, well, you know, Metallica went through a, a a period of where they didn't do guitar solos. You know, it's like who? who's that? Metallica. Metallica. Who? I'm not sure who, who they are. Who? who? <laughs> <laughs> you know, the one with the asshole drummer. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. <laughs> So then you get to number five, and it's uh, feeding feeding the dark, right? Mm -hmm. And it, and it starts out a little different. It's got that that bass with the boom, boom. You know that's that's pretty cool. But then it jumps right back into the heavy hitch in the face, kind of like what they were doing in the past couple songs. You know. Yep. Um, I'll get more into that later too. But then we get to number six, which is wasted on you, and it has that little piano vocal beginning you know mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then it comes in heavier but she's got this thing man where she does the you know just pass me the bitter truth which i like the way she says that and then you get back into the -na 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 -na, you know um this kind of reminded me a little bit of an alanis morissette sound she had a mm -hmm. little bit of that sound not saying she sounds like alanis morissette it just reminded me of her yeah, obviously, Amy Lee is, yeah. is her own. Just you know. the approach, the approach, right? Know, about, about tonality or anything. Yeah. But this was definitely where the album title came from, The Bitter Truth. It's in that song and it's great right. words. And one of my favorite songs on the record because it gave me a little break from the heaviness that's been going on for the whole first five songs. You know, it did right, give me right. a little bit of a break there. So yeah, I really I like that song. I love that. And, uh, you know, and I can't think of which tune it was too, even though it was a heavier song, they went into more of a, um, it was almost a funk thing. Yeah. You know, it was kind of, it was a little bit more, okay. A little bit more syncopated than the heavy four, four on the floor, you know, just. Right. Just Which I'm going to get back to that later too, when we yeah. get through the songs, because there's, there's a couple knocks I have on the record. Yeah. But, uh, so then we get to number seven, better without you starts with the musical box, mm -hmm. you know, it starts out a little slow, but then it comes right back in and it kind of reminded me a lot of the broken pieces shine song. It almost yeah. sounded like part two of that to me. Right. 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 Yeah. So, so after number seven, we get to what track number eight. And that was just the one loaded up with all these vocalists, right? From use use my voice is the name of it, track number eight. And man, I mean, when you get to that breakdown in the middle, that whether you like it or not, whether you like it or not, I wasn't sure whether I liked it or not. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so this is the one where you started naming off all these singers. Yeah, you, know, you, you had Taylor Momsen from Pretty Reckless, right? Right. Lizzie, Lizzie Hale from Hailstorm. Amy McLawhorn, yeah. Lindsey Sterling, Sterling which is the violin player, that yeah. red-headed violin player, right? Sharon Den Adele, backing vocals. Lori One of Lee. Her sisters is that. I bet you Lori, yeah, yes, Lori Lee and Carrie Lee. Yeah, so I knew one was, and she said that a couple of her sisters sang on it, so it probably had both. Yeah. yeah. And which that too, if y'all ever get a chance to do any reading, read a little background on Amy Lee. Yeah, her whole family is musical. Yeah, her whole family is musical, and there's some sadness too. Mm -hmm. There, I mean, we've we've all gone through. I'm, I know some losses and stuff in family, but right, she lost she lost two siblings very young age. Yeah, um, right. And yeah, I, we won't go into details of it, but just just pick it up and read it. it it's it's 
it explains a lot <laughs> with yeah. the dark, dark, dark theories behind our music. So use my voice was really cool too, because the words were pretty awesome, you know? And then when she sings that one part, um, um, don't you speak for me? You're talking about passion, man. When she mm -hmm. rips that out and don't you speak for me? It's, it's like, holy crap, dude. Can it get right. any right. more passionate than that? Right. 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 I mean, that's probably the vocal of the record. Mm -hmm. Just that line. Yep. When she hits that line. It's like, blows you away. Blows you away. Yep. And that's what I was talking about earlier to where she can take a word or two and just make you feel it. You know, it's kind of like, it's kind of like Ronnie James Dio used to do when he would say a word, you felt that word and she could do the same thing, man. And I mean, what a tremendous voice. So then yep. you get the you get the number nine, which is take cover. And yeah. this one had this part in there where in the middle of it they did that doom doom digga digga doom. And then the drums would do that boom boom pa -ba -da -da boom. And then right, he right. did that really quick double bass, that digga 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 digga. You know, it almost sounded like a, a a machine gun at some points in there. Yeah. yeah you know, yeah. which you know reminded me a little bit of Hendrix machine gun when they were doing that ding ding digga digga ding ding digga 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 ding. You know, it's like right, wow. Right. Yep. Then they had that double time there in the middle where they were like, tick, 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 tick. right, right, right. But and yeah. see, that, that's what I was talking about, you know, chopping up the times, time right. signals. And I love that, yeah. you know, and, and it can be done with heavy metal. You yeah. Know? yeah. You don't have Basically. to be four on, you don't have to be four on the floor all the time and see how many, how many 16th notes you can cram in there. Right. He wasn't doing like a bunch of blast double bass. Every right. time he used the double bass, it was meaningful and it didn't, didn't make me say, man, I wish he wouldn't have done it. You know, it was always on point to me. You yeah. know, um, then we get to number 10, which is one of my favorite songs on the record. And I love the vocal keyboard, just her on the piano singing and the string section. Mm -hmm. And, you know, was, you know, the words, what if I can't see your light anymore? Right. Because I'm too long into the dark and when she does <laughs> that dark and goes up, you know, and, I'm on my knees, you know, begging to believe and I feel yeah. so far from heaven. I mean, it's like, I mean, I felt that song, you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. And, well, and to me, I love that about her that she can go from being extremely heavy to just beautifully sing something like this, you know? Well, see, there's very few, very few artists that I find that can literally stir stir me deep emotionally you know i mean very few yeah amy amy's done it on a couple of her songs um you know but you got to go a long way i mean <clears throat> it's it's a special talent you know it is. and i mean i mean the, the passion that she brings and it's effortlessly and then one more thing about that song it was totally different from the rest of it too yeah. which was a nice to come down from that big giant heavy. And then now you got this beautiful song and then number 11, bam, right back in your face. <laughs> that was part of me, which is kind of similar to the rest of the album to me. And the same with the last song, blind belief, you know, it has a, has that great apocalyptic intro type thing going on, but then it kind of sounded similar to some of the other songs again, even though in the middle, it did ease up a little bit on the verses, but I kind of, I, I don't know. I, I think they could have probably, I mean, you know, I'm not going to say they could have left one or two off, but I did get to a point where the album sounded a little similar on a few it songs. Did. It did. But I mean, all of Evanescence <clears throat> through the years have pretty much had the same formula. <clears throat> and we were talking about it before we started actually recording the show <clears throat> yeah um the whole trick to their sound is <clears throat> making sure that you got a rhythm guitar and a bass player that are duplicating what the drummer is doing with his bass drum right that is one of one of the formulas to 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 the songs that right. happen that's their formula exactly i'm not taking anything away from that formula no. I just wish at times so that they could stop. And I know they're using an acoustic piano and some stuff. Because Amy's accomplished uh, pianist. Mm -hmm. 
I wish that some of the other musicians could pick up a mandolin or something and a nice acoustic guitar and they break it down. And, right. And that's, uh, and that's kind of why I liked Far From Heaven so much because right, right. You, know, you had a lot of moody stuff in the background, some strings, a little percussion going on. Yeah, but I'm not asking you to go out there and do barnyard stomp or whatever, you know. I mean, I, I, I agree with you. Yeah. I, I just think that there are times, and I don't care what genre you're in, mm -hmm. you're at one time or another, you're all going to be sitting around on the front porch somewhere and you ain't got amplifiers and you don't have drums. So yep. what are you going to do? You're going to sit there and go, well, okay, just think about the music that you want to play. Or are yep. you going to pick up some acoustic instruments and sit there and improvise? Yep. You know? And, and, I, and I'm the same, I'm the same way on this record. I wish they would have had maybe one or two more of her on the piano and singing, right, you right. know, um, I, I could have used a little more of that on the record. Um, I think I felt, I know there were, we talked about this earlier too, but there were a couple of times when I felt like all that low end was kind of drowning out her voice some. So her voice was kind of getting washed away a little bit because yeah. I mean, you got, two guitar players, they're playing seven strings. You got the bass player playing a five string. They're all in the sub D sub B, even B flat low right. end. And it just was a lot at some point. And it kind of got similar to each song kind of did the same deal. You had the two verse chorus, a vocal solo, and then back to the chorus or verse. Cause, and, and I wish that they would have had a couple more guitar solos in here. I really wanted yep. some more guitar solos. You got two great guitar players. Yep. But you only had one guitar solo on the whole record out of 12 songs, you know? Well, I got to be honest, though. I didn't notice. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't notice the lack of the guitar solos. Yeah. I mean, the album entertained me thoroughly all right. the way through. Um, <clears throat> well, you had her yeah. doing a lot of the vocal stuff. So it kind of covered, like, instead of doing guitar solos, she was doing vocal solo work. Right. And then a couple of rhythm things going on, you know, in the back. But the kicker to that whole scenario is, is the guitar player that they brought in. What's his name? Uh, uh, Troy, uh, Troy McLaurin. Troy. Yep. Yeah. McLaurin. Um, he also teamed up with her to be her writing partner. Mm -hmm. So this is something that they went for. Yeah. Now, I don't know in the end, of course, you know, too, how this goes. Uh, producers step in and go. You got to cut this, got to condense it down, right? Gotta do this and do that, right? Or that's just not quite getting it, you know? Um, yeah. And, you know, um, all in all, that's why you hired a producer. True. And I will that's say that in there to, to let them make the call because who has a more hands on approach to what's going on on the airwaves across the world, right? Than a high price producer. You yep. know, I will say, man, the production of this album was top notch. Right. It was. I mean, especially with all the low end that was going on, you know, the mixing and the mastering of this was incredible. I'm going to tell you right now, like I said earlier, when we were talking on my system, it was awesome. <laughs> I mean, yeah, there's nothing, a nothing drowned it out, anything. It was yep. all very clear and apparent, and it, it the, the whole spectrum was covered. Yeah, and I, and I will say, I mean, to have that many low end instruments at at sub levels, I mean, it's B flats, you know, right. these are like as low as you can possibly get almost, and and it, and it would stood, you know, the frequencies didn't get too far out there, so I mean. You got, you know, Troy, he's playing those PRS, uh, PRSs doing orange amp, and it's just the heaviest stuff, man. And then Jen has the Ibanez, you know, Steve Vai, seven string probably with yeah. her Engel amps. And it was really dirty, heavy guitars, man. And I just really wish I could have had a couple guitar solos more in there. I wish I would have had a couple more piano pieces with Amy Lee. I think if you don't give Amy Lee the high priestess of, of hard rock there, you know, something's wrong with you because yeah. this girl she already, is she already top. won that. Yeah. She, I'm, she should, she should she already won that. I've got that. I got that in the notes over here. They, yeah. her awards and everything. Um, yeah, she already, uh, she was already awarded the high priestess thing. 
Yeah, and she she wears she still wears the crown today. Yeah, so um, she hadn't lost it a bit, dude. Yeah. Now you're talking about Troy and his instruments and stuff, and I I downloaded his stuff. Okay, here he's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven Gibsons that he uses, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight PRSs and a Boulder Creek acoustic guitar. Right. Yeah. So he had a Yamaha that he was showing in one of his demonstrations to a uh, Yamaha acoustic. But lately, yeah, that, I mean, since he got signed on from PRS, he's been playing pretty much exclusively that. You still see him with a Les Paul or Flying V every now and then. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. Yeah. He and then Flying V is a 59. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, you can tell it's a, it's an original. Yeah. But all that heavy stuff is definitely coming through those yeah, Mark Tremonti uh pickups on those prs yeah, and, yeah. and then jen and jen's playing those freaking ibanez gym guitars and universe or whatever those steve Vai guitars coming through the ingle amps man and it's like there's no wonder the world doesn't vibrate when they hit those low notes man you know well those ingle amps are yeah they're pretty awesome yes they are so yeah, I mean, I did have a couple knocks. A couple songs sounded similar. I wish there would have been a little more of uh, Amy and just the piano, or some more, uh, maybe one or two more lighter songs on there with these, because it was a really heavy record. But I'm not going to take that away from it. Uh, I thought the drums. If you're a drummer, you know you ain't going to complain about hearing them, because them drums were up and they had them up in up. the mix. So they were up. Sounded awesome. Uh, great, great love track. Love the cr fact that he's using pearls, mm -hmm. you know, um, Zildjian cymbals. Pearls. I don't I think mean, I've he's... ever seen a pearl drum set before. <laughs> <laughs> right up my alley. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, he's got the top of the lines happening. He's using the masters. And, right. And um, I can't see if I had top of the line, they'd never leave the house. You right. Know yeah. Uh, it just ain't worth it. Yeah. Overall, I mean, the production was great. The sound was great. Amy's superb. There's great musicianship. The bass player, Tim McCord, you know, he's there. He's keeping yep. that rumble. So, I mean, I, I'm i going to jack this one up a little bit because I love Amy so much that I'm giving this one an 8.7. I'm going to give it a 9. Yeah, nine. you going 9. I mean, I was close. I was thinking. And I, if it wouldn't have been a couple of songs that sounded similar to the first couple, I maybe would have went up to an 8.9 or something like that. But I, well, I just think I think they put too many songs on here, but I'm looking at the record time, which could be the reason why they cut out some of the guitar solos because they crammed 12 songs in here when they could have chopped us down to probably 10. Well, the first song was only a couple minute intro, too. Yeah. So. Well, I mean, they still could have cut a couple of songs out, which sounded similar to other songs on the album. Right. And extended them with some guitar solos but like i say you know we're we don't know what's going through the producer's mind no and, and that's I mean, why they're hired they're hired to put stuff together and yeah. obviously when you think of evanescence you don't think of screaming guitar solos you're right. thinking amy lee and that's what they've done is they've highlighted her you know they did her do let her do the solos more than anything so Mm -hmm. but overall great record man i mean definitely heavy i mean it's one of the heaviest records we reviewed this year yep. as far as just total heavy you know the whole thing i mean it 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 barely gives you a breath before they hit you back in the face again you know so yeah i mean kept me entertained i mean yeah, I, I mean I, to it I, I wasn't tired of it at all i'm probably gonna listen to it some more I've actually listened to this song, album about 10 times. It's a great grass cutting album. I, mean, <laughs> I ain't going to lie to you, man. You you start weed eating with this on and you'll be done before the third song. <laughs> I just, I just wish I could figure out how, when I'm driving bus to listen to music, you know, I yeah. figured that one out yet. <laughs> yeah, you had to get some ear earbuds that you can't, nobody yeah, can hear. Got to hear the bell can. ring, you know? <laughs> yeah. What bell? I can't even hear bells anyway. <laughs> All right, well, we'll wrap it up. Um, Evanescence, The Bitter Truth, looks like this. Don't swallow the bitter pill. That's bitter right. Pill. I gave it an 8.7. Mike gave it a 9.0. Great record. Heavy That's record. Uh, Amy Lee shines. Thanks to Palma for requesting us to do this. Um, yep. 
definitely worth the listen and worth the buy. Go get it. I probably, I might even buy this one on vinyl. Yeah. I'm going to go for vinyl on it too. If I buy it. Yeah. yeah I bet it's going to, it'll sweep through this room. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, that's it until next time you guys stay safe. That's right. Peace out. And listen to the music.